Farmers raising plants and animals have known for centuries that selective breeding can produce all sorts of varieties. Cows can be bred into Jerseys and Guernseys for milk and Angus for beef. Dogs can be bred from tiny Chihuahuas to Great Danes. That's always been possible because the cow and dog species have a large potential for variety within them. But in 1859, Charles Darwin published his book, The Origin of Species. What you see here is a paperback edition printed around 100 years later in 1959. Darwin's book introduced the theory of evolution, the theory that completely new species arose from small individual variations and survival of the fittest over eons of time. It's the theory that natural breeding could result in completely different animals. The theory that land animals arose from fish that grew legs and crawled up onto the land. The theory that intelligent ape-like animals eventually gave birth to humans. Without any real evidence, no one had ever seen it actually happen, the scientific community wholeheartedly embraced that theory. It was just what they were looking for. They were glad to toss aside belief in Almighty God as the creator of all life. The Bible begins with the words, in the beginning God created. And if you could dismiss that as false by substituting the evolution theory, then you could dismiss the rest of the Bible with its moral code as well. The evolution theory enabled corrupt and arrogant men to throw aside the restraints of Bible-based morality and do as they pleased. An explanation for life on earth without the need for an almighty creator was just what sinful men wanted. Over the course of a century following the publication of Darwin's book, Bible-denying scientists managed to impose belief in evolution as a requirement to join their profession. We see how something like that can happen because today medical professionals who oppose abortion are being forced out of their profession. We see how school teachers are told to address boys and girls with their chosen pronouns or face being disciplined or fired. And we see how students are flunked out of their science classes or not allowed to advance if they express belief in the creator instead of the theory of evolution. So we can understand how pressure like that produced today's scientific community that's nearly 100% behind that theory, falsely presenting it as proven fact. That's why when the advent of computers and microbiology revealed new evidence against evolution, the scientists covered up that evidence. Let's take a look at that new evidence against evolution that they don't want us to see. Dishonest scientists? How could that be? Before we look at the new evidence from computers and microbiology, let's consider that important question. Aren't scientists devoted to the pursuit of truth? Well, that's the narrative that they want you to believe. But scientists are actually tainted by the same corrupting influences that lead all men astray. For example, scientists were involved in perpetrating the Piltdown Man hoax. Skull and bone fragments were presented as the, quote, missing link, unquote, between apes and men. They fooled people for decades into believing that such a pre-human Piltdown Man existed until it was finally proved a hoax in 1953. Think also of the scientists who worked for Adolf Hitler's Nazi regime, supporting his propaganda about Aryan racial superiority, and the scientists who developed advanced weapons for Hitler's Luftwaffe. Think of the scientific hoaxes and contrary back and forth messages that have abounded during the COVID pandemic. 
Think of the scientists employed by the asbestos industry who declared their products safe and harmless until so many cases of asbestosis and lung cancer piled up that their lives were exposed. Think of the scientists employed by the tobacco industry who declared their products safe and harmless until so many cases of lung cancer piled up that their lives were exposed. How have atheistic left-wing scientists enforced unanimity in their profession to support a questionable evolution theory? The process was exposed in Ben Stein's documentary film titled, Expelled, No Intelligence Allowed. As an ad for the film on Amazon.com says, Big science has expelled smart new ideas from the classroom. Educators and scientists are being ridiculed, denied tenure, and even fired for the crime of merely believing that there might be evidence of design in nature, and that perhaps life is not just the result of accidental random chance. So when computers uncovered evidence against evolution and in favor of creation, scientists engaged in a conspiracy of silence. They concealed the fact that this new evidence destroys Darwin's theory of evolution. What is that evidence? It's the genetic code that maps out the design of every living thing. It is a coded set of instructions or blueprints that can now be read and deciphered by our most advanced computers. Dr. Francis Collins, who headed the Human Genome Project, called that code the language of God. Almighty God devised and wrote the genetic code. And that makes sense because all code is written by someone. And the code that instructs cells how to build a complete animal or human must have been written by God. When a sperm cell fertilizes an egg cell, the resulting DNA in that single cell contains complete instructions, a complete blueprint for building the entire body, legs, head, eyes, and every detail. It's all written in that blueprint, that genetic code. That's a critical piece of information that Charles Darwin was missing when he came up with his theory of evolution. Back then in the mid 1800s, he and his fellow scientists couldn't see anything smaller than the cell. They couldn't see what went on inside cells and they assumed that the cell was a simple building block for living things. They didn't know anything about the complex genetic code found in each cell's nucleus. To them, the cell was like a black box. They had no idea of its inner workings. That's why a professor in biological science who dared to disagree with evolution titled his book, Darwin's Black Box, The Biochemical Challenge to Evolution. Michael J. Behe is professor of biological science at Lehigh University. Over the course of five years, he did postdoctoral post work on DNA structure at the National Institutes of Health. His book is very technical because it explains in detail how DNA code proves that evolution theory is false. Darwin and his supporters in the late 1800s and early 1900s saw small variations among individual creatures, one with a little bit longer leg, another with a leg a little bit longer than that. And they assumed that such a series of small changes over a long period of time could end up changing a fish into a horse and a monkey into a man if enough time went by. What they didn't count on was that the differences between one species and another were not small at all when you looked at the genetic code. The instructions in the DNA for a monkey could not be changed into the DNA for a man without rewriting millions of lines of code. You could breed animals into Guernsey milk cows or Angus beef cattle because the code for all the different breeds was already present in the DNA. 
breeding just caused one part of the existing DNA to go into action instead of another part of that same DNA. No new code was written by the breeding process. You could breed dogs into Chihuahuas or Great Danes because dog DNA already contained the code for each one of those varieties. It was already written in the dog DNA how to produce all the breeds of dogs and breeding simply activated one part or another of that already existing DNA. But to breed a dog into a cat, that would be impossible. Cat DNA is not present in dogs, and dog DNA is not present in cats. The existing DNA would have to be completely rewritten by a knowledgeable and skillful coder. That's, why it would, that's what it would take to change one species into another. Complex code rewriting, not just some small accidental changes or increments. The potential for varieties of different breeds that was present in dog DNA from the beginning did not include cats as a possible variety of dog. The difference between cats and dogs involves millions of lines of code that simply isn't there in the other species. Changing a fertilized egg that produces a dog into an egg that would grow into a cat would be like pulling volumes out of an encyclopedia and substituting other volumes full of entirely different articles. Scientists today have learned how to manipulate DNA a bit by cutting small pieces out and pasting them elsewhere, but they lack the ability to write volumes of new DNA code. In order for the evolution theory to be true, new volumes of DNA code would have to be written by accident. From Darwin's time onward, supporters of evolution pointed what to accidents that they called random mutations and survival of the fittest. But random mutations, those accidents that occur to genes, don't write volumes of new code. Random mutations break things. We can see that when we look at computer code, which is very similar to DNA genetic code, only much simpler. For example, the computer code for a very simple web page could be written like this. When you open the web page that's written like this in a browser, you see this. But if an accident, like a random mutation, knocks out just one character from the code, like this, it breaks the code, so that when you open it in the browser with that broken code, all you see is this, nothing, it doesn't work anymore. Or if the random mutation knocks out a different character from the code like this, then when you look at the page in a web browser, it looks like this. Again, it's broken. Random mutations break things. They don't write new volumes of new workable code. In much the same way, a small mutation in a living cell breaks things and leads to problems. For example, this chart shows diseases the result when certain mutations occur. When one mutation occurs in the GNA genetic, genetic code, it causes sickle cell disease, and scientists know exactly where the break occurs in the genetic code that causes sickle cell disease. When a different mutation occurs in the genetic code, it causes cancer. One mutation causes prostate cancer, another mutation colorectal cancer. When another mutation occurs in the genetic code, it causes cystic fibrosis. Yes, random mutations do not write new genetic code to evolve into new species. Random mutations break things. The discovery of the genetic code written in DNA should have convinced everyone that life was designed and created by God. If you came upon the ruins of something that looked like a structure in a jungle and there was a question as to whether it was really built by someone or if the pieces came together by accident, and then if you found inside that structure a written blueprint with the instructions for building it, then you would know for sure that someone designed and created it. In the same way, the discovery of the DNA blueprint 
with coded instructions for building living things should have convinced everyone to believe in the Creator, God. But by the time this new information came to light in recent decades, the scientific community had already drummed out of their profession nearly everyone who believed in creation. The new evidence proved Darwin's evolution theory to be false. It could now be plainly seen that the differences between species of animals did not result from small accidental changes. Animals differ from one another due to brilliantly written genetic code that was written by the designer, the almighty creator. The discovery that the genetic code is a blueprint written in DNA code shows that each living species was designed by God. But there was hardly anyone left in the scientific profession to give God the glory for this amazing discovery. Of course, Bible readers knew all along that there is a creator who designed and built every living creature on earth. The Bible begins with the words, in the beginning, God created. The discovery of the genetic coded blueprints that he used when designing each living creature should strengthen our faith in the Creator and in his written word, the Bible. If the evolution theory has caused you until now to dismiss the Bible, the evidence presented here should lead you to reconsider. I urge you to seek out the truth of God, the Creator, the intelligent designer who developed the DNA language and who used it to write the genetic code. This almighty creator has also provided the Bible as his written word in a language that you can read. Since the evolution theory has proved false, read the Bible to learn the truth.